Boom! What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children, and fight fans of all ages? It's your boy, Johnny Boom Boom Bravo here, MMA journalist, host of the John Bravo Experiment, a fellow YouTuber here who's dedicated his channel to the life uh, of MMA, to the sport of MMA, uh, all promotions, everything from the UFC down to the local levels. Um, the reason that I'm bringing you this broadcast, this little vid right now is um, I'm in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm in town for UFC 149, I think it is, Fight Night 149, I think it was. But since it's been on ESPN, I think it's three. <coughs> the main event was Jack Hermanson, Jack the Joker Hermanson. Now, as far as nicknames go, not the most intimidating one, versus Ronaldo Jacare. Souza, and if you're going just by names, I mean that's a pretty terrifying names. If you speak Portuguese, that means alligator. That means death and destruction. That means chewed up. He, that's why uh, he's a well-respected, well-known legend in the sport, and he was number four. Hermanson, I think, came into this fight at number ten. So really, I mean, the only one with anything to lose here would have been Souza. Uh, he he was uh he was he was he was a late step in I know that, um, and he just fought 28 days ago. He didn't take any damage whatsoever because he submitted David Branch in the first 30 seconds of the fight. Uh, well, I don't have much time for this video. Um, checked out of the B&B already, and I'm on my way back home to Miami. Uh, but I'd like to tell you that today, you know, uh, well, Sunday, uh, I should say I woke up and I, do, do, I, I, I enjoyed the most delicious, scrumptious, uh, humble pie anybody could ever eat. Because every single pr prediction that I made was wrong. I was absolutely wrong about every, every prediction, every result. So this is why I always say be careful what you put your money on. Um... I think we had a lot of upsets. I really didn't look too much into the odds, but I do know that Vegas had Hermanson six to one underdog with good reason. I mean, uh, you know, Jacare is an is a known threat, and 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 you know, being a ranked four fighter in that division, it, it, it's not easy. You know, that's the John Bone Jones division. Uh, you know, so he's thirty nine years old. I've been watching him on the IG and this and that and the other. I think his attitude was, was I thought his attitude was phenomenal going into this fight. Um, he got in trouble a couple of times. He was doing great in the first two rounds, I think it was, with, with the striking. Uh, he seemed to be the more powerful guy. He seemed to be able to eat the lighter shots from uh, Hermanson. Uh, there, there was nothing Hermanson was going to do on the feet, it looked like, to put him away. Souza is a threat on the feet to put you away in a heartbeat. Just ask Chris Weidman, Derek Brunson. Um, he, he does have knockout power, just, just destruction in his hands. Um, now, uh, Hermanson proved himself last night against this legend. He's tough enough. He was hurt. Uh, you know, maybe uh, in trouble a couple of times or something like that. But I think Souza won the first. And even the second, and then it looked to me like Hermanson throw, slowed it down, slowed, 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 you know, slowed the pace down a little bit. Uh, so as I could say, the best thing he was doing, even though it should have been taking him to the ground, was his body shots. All through rounds one through four, he was landing these massive body shots, and they seemed to be the only thing that was the most effective tool that he was using uh, against Hermanson. But after that third round, and they came back in the fourth, it was almost as though he abandoned that thing. Um, you know, so is this 39. He, he, even at that age, everybody knows he's got a rock-solid chin. I mean, he's not a guy that can just be put away uh, by, I think, even one blow by anybody in that division. Um, overall, on the feet, it looked like Sosa did more damage, but, you know... Just, just, just the blows were not enough to really gain the respect. And several times he jumped in uh, to... <laughs> Actually, in the second round, what happened, he was, I think Sosa was 0 for 0 in takedowns. 
Hermanson went for six and got three takedowns. So he literally jumped into the wheelhouse, the thing that everybody's most afraid of, of Jacare being a six-degree black belt. Uh, he really, literally jumped right into it, and he, he didn't change his game plan whatsoever. He just did what he did. Just like I said that in the predictions that, you know, if it went that way, uh, he was going to lose. But it just turned out, I mean, uh, when, when it went to the ground, um, he also went for a guillotine at some point, and that was when I was starting to get worried for, well, at least for Jack Kermanson, that's just when I got happy for myself because I knew I was going to be right. Um, but that guillotine went to the ground, and it looked to me on the ground, Hermanson was the actual strongest fighter because there weren't too many attempts done by Souza to, you know, negate any, any of his attacks. Um, you know, he was never, ever in trouble in any of those times for a sub. So, I'm really happy to be wrong about this one. I'm sad for Jacare. I think that this is probably going to be one of his, la one of his last fights. Uh, he's been in the UFC for a very, very long time now. Sorry about the audio. You guys are going to see me fidgeting a little bit because it's so impromptu. Um, but he gets the win by decision. Um, I mean, he's on his way to the top. He beat, he beat the, the number four. Uh, his cardio did seem to fade a little bit, but he paced himself well. Like I said, it seemed like he took round three uh, and changed up the game plan a little bit. But I don't know how this affects him mentally. You know, he's at a point in time in his life where he can absolutely retire and be very, very proud of his of his MMA career. Now, we're going to go on to a fight that I said in my predictions that I was not very, very excited for. I want to check the time on how long this is going. All right. So we're going to speed this up a little bit now because that was the biggest fight of the night. Uh, maybe even the biggest upset, uh, or what, the closest to the biggest upset of the night. Um, Hardy, you know, everybody knows him by now for whatever reasons. Greg Hardy versus Dimitri, pardon me if I mispronounce this, Dimitri the lifeguard, Smolyakov. Now, these guys are both coming off a loss. You see, Smolyakov's only losses have been in the, in the UFC. His last two losses were in the UFC. He's definitely fighting for his job here, you know, um, but he had lost that job at one point. Part of me thinks that this was, what you know, I, I hate to say it, but this fight was just so uninteresting. Um, it really looked like a tune-up or what they're calling a setup fight now because they're trying to push Greg Hardy. Uh, <laughs> maybe even fixed. Um, Hardy had to be... On you see, the thing is, is that Hardy had to be on this card. He's from Florida. The NFL draft is this is this weekend, so you know it just brings up a lot of a lot of press, a lot of press that they that, that the UFC would like. So not only did he have to be on the card, he had to win. So they gave him this smolyakov guy who was nine and two coming in four of which were ko's five were submissions i mean i got really excited for this uh he's a master he's a master holder in several titles in freestyle wrestling i mean just has way more experience than, than hardy um hardy should have lost that one he has improved though um one thing that I wasn't familiar with he's with att so if we're seeing dramatic improvements it's because that is the new the new school to be a part of, ATT. Uh, they're the emerging hope for all the young fighters here in Florida, and 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 that might be part of why he improved. But I think he just kind of, you know, if anything, uh, Dimitri might have been scared. Uh, he might have felt that power. I mean, he looked kind of intimidated. I was at the weigh-ins. He looked kind of intimidated there. Um, but he, you know, he was just a smaller fighter, but he did not fight aggressively at all. And when he lost, he, he, he lost on the most telegraph takedown that I've ever seen in my life. Hit with a slight uppercut. It looked like he kind of, he kind of, he kind of, the inertia pushed him in the opposite direction and the ref jumped in, stopped the fight. So Hardy has, Hardy survives in, and the, uh, they did train together. You know, a little while back when um, Dimitrov was in the UFC at AT&T. 
but it didn't seem to help Dimitri at all in that one. I mean, I guess I was wrong. I thought he would be stronger. Um, both of these guys are unranked. Because it'd be interesting to see what this does to the heavyweight uh, division. Then we move on to uh, what was going to be my personal favorite. Mike Perry versus Cowboy Oliveira. Cowboy is a great fighter. Mike Perry is a new great fighter. Uh, Oliveira <laughs> had a, uh, a, 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 a big reach advantage, if I believe, like a four or five inch reach advantage. So the keys, you know, is to do what everybody else did. They laid out that kind of blueprint to how to beat, um, you know, Mike Perry. But, you know, post-fight, he mentioned, um, you know, in the press conference, uh, I was right about the keys of the fight. Just wrong about the result here again. Um, Perry was in trouble in the beginning. Cowboy did exactly what he does, exactly what Ponzinibbio did, side to side, in and out, jabs, not enough in my, in my opinion, as you probably all know, leg kicks, but the leg kick is what got him in trouble, because on one of those leg kicks, he dislocated his toe somewhere in the end of the second round, started limping, um... Mike, in the corner, when he got to the corner, he had to have it popped back into place. So it had to affect his movement. It had to affect his game plan. Um, Perry, uh, he met, I, I thought in my prediction video that this was going to be the key to the fight for Glover Teixeira. But it ended up being the key to the fight for Mike Perry using that peekaboo, press him up against the cage, high pressure uh, style, but still being defensively responsible. And he went to work. He do, uh, he basically, do, to me, dominated the third round uh, to get the unanimous decision. He's just re uh, re-signed with his with UFC. This was his hometown, kinda. I mean, he's from a little bit north of there, but I'm sure all of his friends and family uh, came there to see him. He ended up getting fight of the night, which I think was a hundred and sixty thousand dollar bonus. Congratulations on that, Mike Perry. So this is another one, um, you know, that I'm happy to be wrong about. Um, congratulations, Mike Perry. I hope to see you for a long, long time. Now, speaking of the Glover to share fight. I was wrong once again about this one, but let me make this clear. I was really happy to be wrong about this one. I was right about the keys. Um, I thought that Glover's mentality, I was wrong about this. I thought Glover's mentality was suffering, uh, but it looked like something, uh, you know, Kutaleba did at the weigh-ins just set him off, and, and he was very responsible in there. I thought his chin was gone. But he took flush shots from Kutaleba and uh, ate him up. Um, when when Ian uh, or Kutaleba figured out that he he might want to go to the wrestling, I think he felt the strength and the defense on the floor of the second degree uh, black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu of um, Glover Teixeira. So when he got mounted, it was just a matter of time. Kutulaba knew the gig was up, gave Glover his back, tapped to a rear naked choke. According to the post fight, though, um, you know, Glover said, and this is to my point of the refing, the refing ne needs to improve. He got kicked about 10, 9 to 10 times in the balls. Sorry, groin kicked 9 to 10 times. Um, there were no physical advantages that I could see. Uh, Kutaleba, I thought, you know, I think he's another solid up-and-coming fighter. He's the new breed. He's good everywhere. I thought he'd be stronger than Glover. Apparently, I was wrong about that. But being a fan of Glover Teixeira uh, and being sad about seeing him lose so much recently, I was really happy to see him pull this one off and prove to the world that that, you know, he is... No joke that he is still uh, a threat in that division. Um, and that's basically that fight. So let's move on to the next fight. We had uh, what ended up being my surprise of the night. It was the one I spent the most time looking at because I just figured, like everybody else did, that Lineker's power, Lineker's experience... Lineker's ability to, to get inside, that, that power that he has in that left hook, that overhand, uh, he's, he is uh, good on the ground, um, 
But it turned out Sanhagen is also uh, with um, Team Elevation. So now he's training with the likes of Gaethje. He's training. Uh, I thought he was with AT. Oh, wait. No. Yeah, I thought he was with AT&T. But, um, you know, now he's training with the guys like Gaethje and, 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 thing, and, and a whole bunch of other names. I'm going to get to that a little bit later on the end of the video here. Um, you know, I said that... Um, I said that 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 Lineker's keys to the fight would, you know, Lineker could win any way that he want wanted. But standing Lineker wanted to, you know, set him up for the overhand right or that 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 left hook. You know, maybe you know my love for the jab. Uh, he could have pawed one out of there. Um, he stuffed most of the take. Uh, most of the takedowns that Sandhagen tried to attempt, Sandhagen took some good shots too from Lineker that proved his toughness, which was one of the reasons that I doubted his ability to win this fight. Um, and I was worried about his fight IQ because I didn't know that he was part and he's being trained now by the best uh, camp right now, AT ATT. Um, great job. You know, he's over there with Trevor Whitman. Great job, Trevor Whitman. Congratulations to all you guys. I'm sure he worked with Gaethje, so that makes Gaethje happy. Um, he kept to the game plan. He kept cool. He gets the split decision win. Uh, interestingly enough, he hasn't lost a fight in the UFC since he's been here. and I think it's like been four years. Uh, and keeps it that way. Um, so... Now, was that fight? I got to. I got. I got. I'm gonna have to go to the notes here a little bit more. So now we get to the last fight on the card: Roosevelt Roberts versus Thomas Gifford, the Lion. Um, I was wrong on this one. I think um, the 7-0, and now 8-0, and uh, Roosevelt Roberts proved me wrong. He's got great fight IQ. Uh, <laughs> his keys to the fight, obviously, were to keep it on the feet. Set, as I mentioned in my predictions video, that Thomas Gifford is 73% of his 16 or 17 wins were by submission. So... The keys to the fight for him would have been, the best advice would have been to implement your jiu-jitsu. But the entire first round, he looked like a kickboxer. He wanted to stand and trade and, and, and use absolutely no defense. He left his head right there in the middle, right there to just get targeted the entire time. You know, I thought Thomas was going to be win because he does have more experience and I have a lot of love for jiu-jitsu. Um, my opinion... He was overpowered. He wasn't as strong, and this was his debut. This was the biggest fight of his career, so I'm sad for that. I'm sad for him. Uh, he's had six pro professional uh, 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 boxing matches, so you would think he would have at least learned how to be responsible defensively. He ate a lot of shots. I saw a glimpse of his jits, but mostly Robert nullified the few attempts uh, the first round, half was on the feet, half was on the ground, and Roberts nullified every, you know, or I should say the few times, uh, relatively speaking, that Thomas went uh, for any type of submission or anything like that. When he should have been, because that's when, you have, that's when you're the strongest, there's the least sweat. Uh, the fight was, uh, like I said, 50 on the ground, 50% on the ground, and 50% standing, but Roosevelt Roberts, to his credit, he was stronger too. He was just able to overpower him in, 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 in that regard. Um, and that's pretty much how it went for, for most, most of the rounds. He was able to, Roberts was able to keep it on the feet where he wanted it. 50% uh, I would say the time on the ground got less and less as the three rounds progressed. So it just got worse and worse for Thomas as, as, as he went on. Um, and to Robert's credit, he did get out of a first round, um, 
guillotine that was put on him. And that's it. That was the fight. Uh, it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. But, the one, but I want to bring up a couple of things here. You know, we had a lot of guys from AT&T. Uh, well, not on the card. But we've got a lot of guys right now from AT&T that are just doing absolutely amazing. Um, lots of champions. I mean, Dustin Poirier, uh, former champion Tyron Woodley, Santiago Ponsonibio. These are guys that are with them now. Santiago Ponzinibbio, Tiago Alves, um, wait, oh uh, yeah, uh, Junior Dos Santos, who, since he's joined, you know, he has gotten better, he has improved, he's won his last three fights, Colby, <coughs> Covington, and Jorge, one of my favorites, Masvidal, game bread, I've been watching him for 15 years, Pedro Munoz, Douglas Lima, who's another champ, or was champ, former champ, um, Team Elevation, that's another one that's on the rise. Uh, the Ream has come over there. So that's another training partner these guys have and that experience these guys have to learn from. Gaethje, Magni, Dominic Reyes, Rose Namawanis. And I don't know if you guys remember, but he, he is, uh, in the beginning of one of, the, one of these fight night post pre -lim, prelims, I don't know which one it was, but De, uh, Devante, Devante Smith. Remember that name. He's an upcomer out of Team Elevation. Um, I look for him to be Rookie of the Year. The other thing I wanted to touch on is the refereeing. It was, it was bad. If you ask, if you ask Orlovsky, it was awful. Orlovsky obviously won that fight. Um, sorry, judging, uh, judging, and refereeing. Um, but the, the, it, it was obvious that Arlovsky won that fight, but I don't know how they got to the decision that they did. That's my rant. Uh, we've got to get judges in there that have some kind of experience in the fight game. The, uh, num my number two, my number two complaint was that this co-main was bad. I mean, I think he was on there for the reasons that I mentioned earlier, Florida boy, um, you know, NFL draft, uh, but I didn't like, I didn't like the co-main choice. Why not put some of the flies in there? You know, I would have rather seen Joseph ben Benavidez uh, versus Wilson Hayes versus, or uh, Wilson Hay, uh, or uh, you know, Benavidez versus Davidson Figueroa, or or Alex Perez versus uh, Davidson would have been a good fight because a lot of these guys have fought before. Um, Juicier, uh, you know what would have been interesting would be a rematch between uh, Bermudez and Juicier because, you know, Juicier lost to Bermudez, but that was six years ago. Formiga has amassed a lot of experience and improved now, uh, and he's number one ranked in the division, and he's one of the best finishers. Uh, well, I should, I, no, I'm sorry. He's not one of the best finishers. The finishers in that division are guys like Figueroa, Pantoa, um, Honorable mention to Dustin Ortiz, not as a finisher, but just another guy who should be in this mix here. I would have rather seen maybe like, like Dustin versus, I don't know, anybody in the top 10, um, yeah, or in the top five for that. Uh, also, I want to make a mention of something that I saw that was really awesome. It, it was a, it was another use of a jab. It was how Takashi Soto upset Ben Saunders and knocked him out cold um, in the prelims. It was the main of the prelims. He was pawing his jab to the perfect defense of Ben Saunders. But Ben Saunders had this funny jab where, I'm sorry, um, Soto had this funny jab where he was able to push the defense out of the way and then sneak this hard jab in that hit Saunders right on the button, dropping him immediately. Ref comes in for the stoppage. So that's it for today's show, ladies and gentlemen. Um, look for my next one. Uh, thanks for coming. Let, hit a like. If you liked what you saw, hit a dislike. If you disliked what I saw, uh, what you saw, um, I'm tired and thirsty, and I'm headed back home, I'll see you later, I'm out, peace, boom!